This is the Married to Doctors podcast, episode number 188. Someone else responds, I'm exhibiting the side effects. I told my husband I would probably always be a germaphobe, that I was sorry I was ruined. He was so fantastic with his response. It's okay if you're a germaphobe, you are not ruined. And that's where I got the title for this podcast. I love that. You are not run. Welcome to the Married to Doctors podcast, the longest running show specifically for spouses of physicians. Because we know that being married to a doctor isn't always as glamorous as it sounds. We're here to improve our perspectives and mindsets through coaching tools and best practices, build community and limit isolation and strengthen ourselves and our families with tools, programs, and resources. Now here is your host, your favorite certified life coach and physician family expert, Laura McKeldery. Hello everyone, a couple of announcements, really important, so listen up. First of all, it's not too late to register for the first ever Married to Doctors retreat. So for more information on that, it's gonna be in Austin in October. If you want all the details and to register, just visit my website, marriedtodoctors.com, and you can register there. I'm really excited about it. The second thing I want to tell you is that I am going to take a summer vacation this year. You know, I've been bringing the podcast for almost four years weekly, and I'm gifting myself a true vacation, even from my podcast. So don't worry, my intention is to be back in the fall, but for the next few months, I won't be releasing new episodes, but that's okay. There's over 180 episodes in the archives. You can go back. I think I've made around 20 free guides and worksheets to work through. So there is a lot of material for you. You can always go back and explore my archives. Also related to that, if you are a coaching client, If you are in me, marriage and medicine, or if you have a coaching session, please know that even though I'm taking a break from the podcast itself, I am still doing my coaching this summer and I would love to coach you. So again, if you are a client or you've considered getting coaching, please reach out to me and I will be there for you. out for coaching because I was having particular struggles in my marriage, being married to a family practice doctor, wanting to improve my marriage. So that's why I reached out. I thought it was especially intriguing that this was Laura's specialty. Being coached by Laura has been always uplifting and positive. I always come away really feeling so much lighter and with really practical tools, mainly working with my mind and uh, sort of cleaning up my thoughts and improving my perspective. So, you know, that in turn makes my heart lighter and probably more fun to be around. Laura has helped me with several different issues uh, pertaining to my marriage, my relationship with my husband, being a parent, and then just other personal challenges that have needed some attention. I would absolutely recommend anybody coming to do coaching with Laura. She is so sweet and attentive, delightful really easy to talk to and um, very understanding and she always gives you her full attention you feel seen and heard you'll you'll come away with a lightness that you didn't have before and some practical tools going to discuss a topic that came up in my Facebook group. And I'm not going to use names out of privacy, but I wanted to share with you the thread. So first of all, someone posted, for those of you 
whose other half was on the front lines, especially in the highly concentrated areas during the initial outbreak, are you seeing side effects in your spouse now that everything is opening up and people are going back to normal? So this is, of course, in reference to COVID. And the name of this episode is You Aren't Ruined. And you'll see why I named it that as I read through this thread. So she's really, you know, just asking, is anyone else seeing side effects from their spouse? And I would like for you to listen to some of the comments that came in. Someone responded, my husband is an intensivist and works in the ICU. He's still wearing his mask in public despite being fully vaccinated. He's still hesitant to be around large crowds of people. We just ate in a restaurant for the first time last week since March of 2020. Someone else responded, my husband is the medical director in the ICU. Things were terrible for an extended period of time. He's been having a lot of success talking with someone which he really needed. I still feel like we live in dread of a potential next spike since he only ever sees the worst of the worst. There's definitely some PTSD in our family. Another response. Yes, husband is a hospitalist who worked the COVID unit most of the year. He's been vaccinated since December and still wears an N95 everywhere. I think he is experiencing PTSD. Then the original poster said, I appreciate you all and anyone else that responds. This seems to be something I gave extra attention to at the beginning of the year and seem to have got caught up in the rush of the school year, so have since overlooked. We just had a chat this weekend where he expressed some feelings about the massive amounts of deceased he saw. And of course, we still take precautions even though we are both fully vaccinated. I think I see it more in his emotions than in any new habits or routines. It breaks my heart they had to go through it. We live in such a fast paced world, who knows if they will ever get the credit due to them for the war of a pandemic they fought. Additional responses say, how can they get credit when so much of our country and world act like it was never a big deal? That's where therapy can be very successful in teaching them to cope with feelings of abandonment after all the hero talk has faded. Again, a response, I know it's just that It's like a patient that has a drunken night partying and they come in the hospital and our spouse saves their life. That patient has a story to tell about one crazy night. And um, she goes on to say, that was the first thing my husband told undergrad students he spoke with. It's a thankless profession. So know why you're doing it. Being the spouse, I just want more for them. A commenter said, it sure is thankless. My husband says we went from heroes to zeros. They're definitely families that show gratitude, but they are few and far between. It's great that your husband shares that wisdom because they need to know going into that job is not glamorous. And then we heard someone comment, my family's made light of the virus and have tried to convince us we're overreacting. My husband told them he signed way too many death certificates and discharged too many people with permanent lung damage to see their side of things. He had to run a code and pronounce a patient on two different occasions in front of their spouse who was also sick. People have no idea what healthcare workers went through this year. And then someone said, I'd love to hear a podcast episode, cover the psychological trauma our spouses went through during the pandemic and how we can support them. And just as an aside, I would love to have a panel on this in the future. And then someone said, yeah, but I wish anyone else would listen to it. We are again, once alone in this. I agree. My family and friends don't want to hear it. They've had their own experience with the pandemic and don't have the emotional energy to listen to healthcare workers. I believe there are many of us experiencing the same thing that could benefit from the same support. Let's include in that topic of trauma, the heartless practices of administrators cutting staffing during pandemic since patient volume was down. Not sure how all specialties were affected, 
but for EM, it was incredibly demoralizing. My husband is still arguing with people on Facebook. He's angry at the political turn and how people don't take it serious. I tell him to stop, but he just can't. I just want my husband back. My ER doc was doing the same and then began talk therapy. He's much less reactive now. We did family therapy and he almost walked out. Our family is stressing, hoping it gets better soon. We did family therapy too and didn't go well either. He appreciates his individual therapy since most of this session he debriefs work with his therapist, which makes him feel seen and heard. She teaches him effective coping skills. He's been a doc for 27 years and COVID sent him to his knees. Therapy was a must do. My husband is still suffering as he tries to hide it at times. However, I see through it many times. It's going to be a long, hard road. The relief since the vaccine is palpable in our house. We both work at the same hospital and were vaccinated in early January. I do think going through this past year together really helped both of us. We know intimately what it's been like, the terrible things we've seen, and we've gotten even closer supporting each other. So grateful our entire social circle is also vaccinated. Gathering for dinners has been so wonderful. I do ultrasound and regularly spend long amounts of time in very close physical contact with COVID patients. He rotates around and spends lots of time in the ICU and PICU, but last month he was on infectious disease and it was really re-triggering knowing that after all the patients he saw got COVID after vaccines became widely available to all adults and just chose not to be vaccinated. I'm currently 21 weeks pregnant with our first, found out I was pregnant two weeks after my second dose, after 10 years of infertility, and my husband is really struggling with a horrible reality. His family isn't vaccinated. And then she goes on to express some concerns over them being around a newborn baby. Someone else responds, I'm exhibiting the side effects. I told my husband I would probably always be a germaphobe, that I was sorry I was ruined. He was so fantastic with his response. It's okay if you're a germaphobe, you are not ruined. And that's where I got the title for this podcast. I love that. You are not ruined. There's some additional comments here. And in the end, someone said, my husband is a general practitioner and he can't see an end to it. The local vaccination program takes a lot of planning, extra work, et cetera. Referrals have had to be postponed as well. And it's definitely taking a toll. And as I read through that, I just wanted to, first of all, share these responses in a podcast format for you. So you could know that I do see and hear you. And I'm really thankful for all of you sharing. And I definitely agree with the one poster's husband that none of you are ruined. I don't think you're ruined. I don't think your husbands are ruined. And here's why. I think humans are very, very unique for the very reason that we have choice. We have the ability as humans to choose how we respond. I believe that this gift of choice is our most precious gift. It's so easy to feel like victims, to feel like the predicate to a sentence, to feel like we have to fall into place. But the power of choice is truly a gift given to each one of us. We can decide who we want to be, how we want to act, despite the actions and words of others. We have choice in how we want to treat others and how we want to feel about others. And of course, all feelings are open and sometimes valid for that choice. The choice of frustration, anger, hurt, disappointment, pity, compassion, forgiveness, understanding, all of these may be appropriate. All of these may be natural at times, but we can also work through all of our feelings and we have the ability 
to be resilient, to overcome, and to actively choose to feel differently should we choose to. (laughs) In addition to feelings, we also have the wonderful ability to choose actions. We can choose to vaccinate or not, to wear masks, to continue social distancing. I often tell my clients that I work with in coaching that, you know, as long as a choice is not immoral or illegal, let's consider it and let's consider deciding if that's what you want. You know, many of these situations are so personal in your life. It's really hard for me to make big general statements, but I do want to encourage you and your spouse to reach out to a therapist or a life coach or a listening ear that can really help you through these challenges. I think the trick is a lot of times, you know, how you want to feel, but you don't know how to get there. And I can tell you that it's a choice, but there is a process in generating the feeling. How you get there will be with your thinking, of course, but thoughts have to be sincere. Affirmations alone aren't going to get you there. Here's just a few thoughts that you might try. My family's committed to supporting each other. It's possible for us to move past the effects of COVID and keep what we've learned. Families go through challenges and stick together, even become closer. That's our goal too. We are learning how to get through this. We are exactly where we're supposed to be in processing this. It's just as likely that we will move on from this as we won't. I'm curious what our timeline will look like. So just as a reminder, I am doing life coaching this summer. If any of you would like some help with this, I would love to work with you one-on-one and help you really scaffold your thinking and your feeling to a better place. Again, the podcast will be back in the fall I love you all. I am here for you. I'll be signing off for a few months, but I look forward to being in touch with you on social media. I'm sending each of you a big hug and so much love. Have a wonderful week. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Married to Doctors podcast. Our mission is to make successful homes happier. To learn more or to share your story, visit our website at marriedtodoctors.com.